Hi everyone, today's story is Jamie O'Rourke in The Big Potato, and it's an Irish folktale. We've read several different folktales from different parts of the world earlier this year, and this one happens to be from Ireland. Jamie O'Rourke in The Big Potato. Our AR number for today is 59839. And this story is by Tommy DePola. Ready? Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, an Irish folktale. And you can see these beautiful illustrations. Tommy DePola writes the words and he draws all the pictures. And you can see the family down in the corner here. Let's read and find out what happens. Ready? Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had to do with growing potatoes. And look at him there. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, we'll have to, nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the praddies. And that's just a Irish word for the name potatoes. So it's praddies they're going to use. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. Me back's as sore as can be. Sure as, it, sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get up out of this bed. And you can see him laying here in the bed. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and watering, and weeding anyhow, would go out to the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland, all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seeds. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke, the village woman said. Why, it's the first time she's had rest since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no praddies all winter. And no praddies meant no food. Oh, poor me, well, Jamie. I'll starve to death. I'd best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon death will be knocking on my door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing in a tap, tap, tapping sound. Sure, and I wouldn't be knowing, Jamie whispered, but I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heel of, fairy, of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held him firm. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortal Man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fairy shoes, and I only have one or two pieces of gold in my pocket. Wouldn't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I wish for, Jamie asked. Me, who's about to die of starvation because my wife is sick in bed and can't dig the praddies for the winter. And they're such puny praddies anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest praddy in the world. It would last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant this seed, water it, and wait. I wonder if he's going to make the trade, the seed for the gold. 
I don't know. Let's turn the page and find out. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted. And as the leprechaun dropped the seed in Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails and off the leprechaun scampered. When Eileen heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in all of Ireland, but a fool as well, giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed. Well, I'm going to plant this seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said, and out he went. And Faith Eileen did see, in no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed in the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. Look at the size of that potato. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig that pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you knew it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming all to see the big potato. Can you see the big potato behind him? It's right here. Where did it come from, they asked. Jamie told them about the lucky night he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why anyone could have gotten a pot of gold, he bragged. But the biggest pratty in the world? Well, that took some doing. However, did you outsmart a leprechaun? They all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. We'll help you dig up your pratty, Jamie, if you tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes, and they all started to dig. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew up out of its hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop, wedged between the stone walls on either side of the road. What to do now, they all cried. Can you see it stuck? This is the road into town. So some people are on this side of the road and some people are stuck on the other side of the road. That pretty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by it. The constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in or out of the village? What shall we do? The villagers all wailed. Then they all looked at Jamie and said, It's your pretty. You'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up, there's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't you all take some? And there's his wife, Eileen, up out of bed. So the vill villagers saw and chopped and carted off huge pieces of the potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and just watched. Can you see? He's right here. Oops, right here with the kitty watching. Everybody else work. All winter long, everyone had enough potato to eat. And eat, and eat, and eat. Until no one wanted to see or, see or hear of potato again. Look at their faces. They started out so happy. And then as it went along, not so happy anymore. In the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for a seed, and it's just about time to plant it. Oh, no, the villagers all cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before St. Patrick and all the saints 
to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit, Jamie O'Rourke was right. And look at all the food that the villagers brought them. And that's the end of our story. And this is an Irish folktale. And we'll be reading some other folktales from other parts of the world. Have a great day, everybody. Hope to see you all soon.